This is Forrest Herman Giuseppe, a Portuguese board quarterback, and you're watching him dominate as a 13 year old eighth grade quarterback. Forrest is a big fan of Patrick Mahomes, but incorporates a variety of legendary quarterbacks like Aaron Rodgers, Prime Russell Wilson, and Lamar Jackson into his game. Forrest is disappointed that despite the NFL being an international league, unfortunately, the most coveted and popular position in said league is dominated by American born players. In this video, you're going to watch Forrest attempt to become the highest rated quarterback in high school football history. No, the title and thumbnail is not wrong. If you stick around, it will all come together. But before we get into four years of high school football to send off NCAA 14, we, Forrest, needs to finish his middle school career. We pick up with Forrest on the final stretch of his 8th grade year. Unfortunately, due to the lack of teams, there is no 8th grade playoffs in this part of Washington State. So, the two teams that play in the 8th grade championship are hand-picked. And unfortunately, after losing a game to this monstrous defense earlier in the season, Forrest and the Yellow Jackets need to run the table for a chance at State. So, coming out against the Arnold Knights, a reoccurring team, Forrest is going balls to the wall as he buys just enough time to bomb them on this opening drive. Normally, 8th grade coaches aren't the best in the world, but this one rides the hot hands as Forrest gets an easy 20-yard touchdown run. Defense gets a stop, and after a few handoffs, Forrest gashes them for another 16-yard run. Forrest makes several plays like this a quarter, and it would be a four-hour video if I showed all of them. For example, this nasty juke that literally made the Xbox drop frame as he torches them for another massive touchdown run some of you may think it's unfair but hold that thought as Forrest rips another 65 yard touchdown run to make it 21 plus but to get back on track a lot of players dominate middle school and JV football and Forrest is just one of them not too many passing highlights today but Forrest guns a back shoulder fade into the end zone to run it up 35 to 3 fast forward Forrest fires a laser to the tight end but he couldn't finish so we got to come right back to it and Forrest lobs that in for his fifth touchdown of the day to wrap it up now it's the season finale against a winless team and Forrest wastes no time as he rips off a 57 yard tubby but just because this series is about Forrest that doesn't mean other people can't get love as Tompkins outruns Jones County on the toss if that wasn't enough he rips a 20 yarder to make this a 14 plus swing Fast forward, two minute drill, Forrest beams a throw for 36 yard. Good throw, but Forrest has a bad habit of bailing out of the pocket when he could step up and stand strong. Speaking of that, Forrest stands 10 toes in the pocket and adds six to the board with a beautiful corner route. Two minute drill part three, Forrest guns a seam route into field goal range, but unfortunately he can't get enough air on this one and it gets snagged by the wrong team. But on the flip side of the half, Forrest shows no fear as he hits Dob Zinke on the sideline for 36. Then he hits Nelson off the back foot for a 10 yard touchdown. We aren't scared of you. Time to take the air out of the lungs with a little screen and go. Dobzinki catches it, puts the wiggles on him for another tubble. Tubble? Tubble? Unfortunately, running the table did not get them picked for stay, but Forrest ends his middle school career with a 7 1 record and a pretty decent highlight reel. It's now freshman year, and Forrest is now a 6 foot 1, 180 pound athlete, and he was so impressive in the offseason, he's starting on JV. He makes his debut as a high school quarterback versus Lake Travis, the JV team, obviously. And we got film back for this, and for some reason, Lake Travis records his uh, games in a 4 3 format. And that's okay because it's fourth and two down seven and Forrest fires a beam to Dobbs and gives 26 yards in his second completion. Later in the drive, he hits a 17-yard out route to set up this beautiful 17-yard touchdown run tying the game. After a couple penalties, the Yellow Jackets ends up in the red zone where Forrest shows off his leg. Fast forward 30 second drill and Forrest wants to cook. He hits the post for 21, then one time out later, he hits the tight end on the other side of the field on another post. Calm under pressure, Forrest steals the lead before halftime when Booker cooks Lake Travis on the middle full curl. Flip side of the quarter, driving down the field, Forrest hits an out route in the red zone, but he leads his wide receiver out of bounds. But that's okay as he skips into the end zone for a 14 point swing, and the lead is just as big. Back on offense, Forrest steps up in the pocket and sprints the Yellow Jackets into the red zone, but the red zone is notoriously dangerous as Forrest throws his first pick as a high school quarterback on his redemption drive Forrest hits a crosser and his uh, wide receiver fights for this touchdown back into the end zone after a turnover Forrest throws this beautiful fade route into the end zone 
Forrest is showing some beautiful flashes at QB. Forrest wins his first high school game in dominating fashion, 42 to 14. Shout out to the defense as Lake Travis will be a formidable four in the future. We're having a slow start in game two versus East Carey as they launch this absolute fucking bomb to put the pressure on us and now we are down four. You're not used to hearing F-bombs in postcom, huh? It's okay because Forrest is in the one minute drill and he rips off a massive 31 yard rush. After a few dots, Forrest gets us on the 12-ish yard line and he buys an absurd amount of time standing tall in the pocket but no one is open so he scrambles and makes it an easy field goal. Opening drive of the third and it's a massive third and 10. Forrest hits an out. Fast forward. Another third and Giuseppe and he hits Ben Thomas one yard short of the Forrest. It's JV football. Be aggressive. First and 10. Down by one. Forrest guns it in there for six. Unfortunately, East Carey is cooking though. QB gets a big run. Then I think he throws a dot. Followed by another big run. Third and five just outside the red zone and he's forced to throw it away. Now it's our chance to take control and it's a risky fourth and three. But it's JV. Let's be aggressive. Forrest hits the curl for 10 yards. Freshman QB doing well against a sturdy JV defense. Third and six, look at this beautiful catch and throw in the corner. Again, more flashes as a quarterback for Forrest. Second and four, Forrest scanning, 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 bam, there's the dagger. Unfortunately, sometimes one stab wound isn't enough because East Carry is back on the goal line and they get a tough catch over the middle. Back on offense, it's third and 13 after a massive sack, no ditty, and a late throw, and it gets swatted away. We have no chance but to punt to this feisty offense. On defense, it's fourth and five. Toughest JV game yet, and we get a massive swat to seal the victory. Game three as a freshman versus Henry Ford High, and it is second and four. Forrest throws a beautiful post to the tight end. Keith tops this drive off with an easy run. Second and five after a punt, and not only does Forrest miss a read, but he throws a tight one, and that's a pick six. First play of the redemption drive, and we get blasted. That's okay, because Keith has a 17-yarder for third and two and steals the first for us. Now Forrest can cook, hitting Dobzinki on a curl. He puts the wiggles on a man for the first. On the next play, Forrest does not care that there is three defenders because one of them is trailing and the others are flat-footed and that's a honey hole shot. First and goal at the five. This is what I call a redemption drive, baby. Or almost, as he gets stuffed at the one. That's okay because we ran it back for six, Perfect. baby. Two minute drill tied at 14 and Forrest kicks it into high gear after getting phenomenal blocking. After trading punts, it's third and one, and Forrest obliterates some ankles for a big run. After some dots, it's second and ten on the 12-yard line, and Ben Thomas is butt-ass naked in the end zone doing jumping jacks for a tubby. No diddy. After some fumbles, the game is tied at 28, and it's time for Forrest to show off the intangibles. Third and 11, curl route, quick dot. Third and 12, out route, easy bread. First and 10, play action, roll out, another laser. Second down, drop back, post route, naked. Taken down again, by time, pump fake, dot, first and goal, 18 seconds left, read option, one on one, he's not in the same atmosphere and that's game! 3-0 as a freshman quarterback playing JV ball and that's when the head coach gets a hold of the JV tape as region play is about to start and he's amazed with the poise and athleticism and the big play mentality that Forrest has and he needs to get Forrest on the varsity field but with all-star sophomore quarterback Bobby Mason Jr. and with Forrest still developing as a young quarterback there was no way he could have freshman Forrest Giuseppe leading a varsity offense that's when it hits him. Let's get Forrest not only in the weight room with everyone else, but let's make sure he's drinking those protein shakes. Hell, get him too. Let's see if his mom is dedicated enough to put him on a high calorie diet. Because as a 14 year old freshman, Forrest is 6'1", 180 pounds, and he's only going to get bigger. So let's throw him at tight end. Let's, this, we can test his grit. Him being undersized won't really matter because he won't be in line as much. He'll be a move tight end. And in high school, just about half the team is undersized anyways. He can learn the offense while getting uh, acclimated to the varsity speed and the, the power of the game.
kicking off of varsity play as you can see here these are the standings wall and it's currently number one at two and zero. Oh, but we're starting conference play so everything is finna get shaken up we are currently number two in the standings at three and zero. Oh, but as you can see everyone is tied with the conference standing let's get it pop and play action mason jr looking for it man he's gonna throw a dot the to toss real quick nice catch over the middle here we go uh two tight ends 12 personnel i believe giuseppe in motion mason giuseppe gonna get his first catch as a high school varsity player for a little seven yards little read option mason jr gonna try to put the wiggles on a man does not work but he gets a first down here we go a bunch running back to the right mason jr looking for a man had the corner doesn't take it throws one to giuseppe over the middle he makes his second catch as a varsity player little uh zig route to the end nice catch good hand from the 6'1 180 pound freshman here we go second and three on the goal line well, not on the goal line but in the red zone mason jr looking for a man throws over the middle to archie and i think that should have been a touchdown it was not but that is okay because we're gonna have this easy run to brady and he gets our first touchdown of varsity play and our first touchdown of varsity play in the series walton ties it off camera it is now seven seven second and ten Jay Mason Jr. is going to drop back looking for a man. He's going to throw that over the middle. Wide open is Market Smith for 15. Easy bread. Running the two minute drill. Mason Jr. throws it over the middle again, and that is a drop pass. I, I mean, that's not even a drop. He doesn't even touch it. It's crazy. I go to the replay, and this just went right through his hands, and that is a momentum killer. But here we go, fourth and nine. I get greedy. Tries to throw it to Smith so he can do something with it. Threw it late. Everyone was in a blanket. It does not work. So now we are down 14 to 7. And we're going to come right back at them. Mason Jr. 10 years in a pocket. He is going to get loose. And there is a first down. After that first down, we're going to come out in doubles. Running back to the left, making a couple of adjustments. The stadium post is getting to us. That is okay, though. Can we throw a dot to Luke Sanders? You're going to see him come up clutch for us many times in this series. Back in the pocket. Mason Jr. rolling out, looking for a big play. He is going to take it himself. He has plenty of mother room, and he gets out of bounds. That should have been unnecessary roughness, bro. Second and 20, probably after a sack. Mason Jr. throws the curl to Archie. He tries to get loose, but that is okay. He only gets 12. Third and nine. Need a dot. Looking for a man. Taking 10 years in the pocket. Rolling out again. Man, wide open. He fucking dropped it. No way. You, uh, you're going to see here that he actually calls for the ball and drops it. Look at him. He's wide open, but I'm not reading that side of the field. I bail out, and I'm like, holy crap. He is butt naked doing jumping jacks in the end zone, and it hits him in the hands. You can't call for the ball and then drop it. Fourth and nine again. It is looking tough. Everyone's in a blanket. Throw it up to the 6-1 freshman, and it is dropped. This is a tough one. Going into the fourth, we are on defense. Third and seven. This one is a huge momentum play. We got to get a stop. They hand it off to Harwell. He cuts it back, and... He's short. Fourth and one. They are going to kick a field goal. We have a mother fluffing chance right here. Hopefully they miss this motherfucker. They do not because the AI is perfect. Is what it is. We have a minute and 57 seconds to be a goddamn hero. Mason Jr. Five wide favorite role the formation in the show. Uh, throws the quick little dot to Marcus Smith. He gets the first. Dropping back again, looking for it, man. Taking his time, rolling out. Very dangerous when he rolls out. Not so much today, but you will soon see. He throws it up the green. He makes the catch in the traffic. Let's go. 40-yard reception. This is what we need. Big chunks. Dropping back again, looking for it, man. X wide open over the middle. He throws the dot. He gets hit, but he holds on. What a saint. Motion a man out. Mason Jr. looking for a man. Giuseppe butt naked in the end zone. That is the corner that we needed, baby. And this is now a three-point game for Giuseppe making an impact play in the first game of varsity. Here we go. On defense for all the mother fluffing marbles, baby. We were user and huggins. Minute 21 left. Hand off right. We get a user tackle, baby. Shut that shit down. Instant uh timeout. Back again. Run commit left. Larson one-on-one. -on -one, and we lose! He gets the first! Oh, brother, that was a killer. I think that it, we're cooked at this point. Yep, that's going to do it. 17-14, to 14, we lose our first varsity game in a tough defensive battle against Walton County, a team that will be a reoccurring theme in the foreseeable future. Forgive me for any hiccups and slip of the tongues. It's my first time recording like this. As you can see, Walton is now number one in the north. Uh, we should be showing up here shortly. There we go. We are now at the bottom. We are second to last, and we are going to have two 
go on a run to get back into the state uh, conversation. But here we go. Starting off the game with a little read option. Mason Jr. in the all whites. Getting loose. Might put a move on a man. Doesn't work, but he does get 20 yards. Giuseppe coming in motion. Going to try to get a block for a brother. He does get a block for a brother. Eric Brady gets 10. Out. Motion and Giuseppe out. Uh, Mason Jr. is going to drop back. Look for our man. Has Giuseppe over the middle. Wish he had a little bit more time to wiggle through that. But as okay. Makes a tough catch over the middle. Rolling out. Man in his face. And he throws a pressure dot to Archie. All right. Five wide. Dropping back. That was not five wide. But we got a man in the corner. That is Archie for a 10-yard touchdown to put us up seven. Going plus seven right now is big. We need a bounce back game like hell. Dropping back. Mason. Uh, that's not Mason. That is Giuseppe in the slide. And he's getting loose. This is going to be his biggest catch of the season so far. Now we're on the red zone. Mason Jr. looking for a man. Has the post route. What a catch. Going off one hand. 16 yard touchdown reception. I can't even speak English right now. That was cold. I have never seen that animation before in this game, dog. That was ridiculous. Look at this. Mm. He was wide open too, bro. Use both hands. Anyways, play action. Mason Jr. You're looking for a man. Had B wide open. A is streaking across the field. Will he try to make that throw? No, he throws it to B and he makes a tough catch. Putting his nuts on a man. Pause. No Diddy. Mason Jr. in the pocket. Giuseppe wide open on the numbers. We are Perfect. cooking today. Dropping back on the goal line. Throwing the fade route. What a catch. Ernest Toth looking like Dez mother fluffing Brian in the goddamn flesh. 11 of 11. Bobby Mason Mason Jr. and we're laying it on him. Two minute drill. Mason Jr. in the pocket all fucking day. Giuseppe wide open and the only thing we did wrong was lead him out of bounds. But that is okay because Brady is going to walk up in the in the end zone easy like he lives there. Pitch a motherfucking tent because we're going to be there all day. Read option. Bobby Mason Jr. just broke two fucking ankles. Wow, I can't speak English no more either. 23 yard rush. Mason Jr. dropping back looking for a man. Has the post wide open. Hits Giuseppe and he just can't. We can never get that extra yard. Tried to get this to Giuseppe they double cover him that is okay because Travis Archie the senior is wide open in the end zone they are really not hanging with us 35 to 10 we just got to put the pressure on him as if we haven't already rolling out has the route bounce wide open that is Marcus Smith for the 23 yard touchdown and Bobby Mason Jr. just broke the school record for passing touchdowns in a game he had the one pick it happened off camera we do not care because we are up 42 to 10 with three minutes left this is the bounce back game of the century and yes that will be the final score 42 to 10 we take the dub right here actually 42 to 17 i didn't know they scored some pity points there in the end what a catch by giuseppe though crazy highlights we might be able to run the gauntlet here and hopefully we can getting right into the action bobby mission you dropping back with before a man hits giuseppe over the middle for a massive game at home in the all black looking real good plenty of time in the pocket he is just going to scramble that one in there to make it plus seven I really wish our receivers and Giuseppe could just get that extra two to three yards to get those passing touchdowns. That would be a leap, but that is okay because this is Bobby Mason's show so far as he throws one to Marcus Smith. I know, I know this is supposed to be about fours, but quarterback gets the ball most. He got to distribute. Uh, Bobby Mason going to throw one up to the man himself. Speak of the devil, and he shall appear, and he is terrorizing these defenses as a true freshman. Greed option gets a great block by Greed. Mason Jr., he might take this all the way, and he actually does, and that is going to put us up plus seven as we go up 21 to 14. Actually, I misread the score. They only have seven, so we're up plus 14 as he takes it again. Gets another good block by Greed. MVP, wish he could on a step on, but we'll take the 25. Get high, get high. Get high. 73 rushing yards on the day. Read option again on the goal line. It was a 3v1, and he still gets into the end zone. I'm telling y'all, this is for Giuseppe's show, but Bobby Mason has taken over. Plenty of time in the pocket. He is going to throw this one to Giuseppe. He catches it in the end zone, but unfortunately, that is illegal touching or whatever it's called when you run out the back of the end zone and catch the ball without establishing yourself. That is okay, because Mason is going to find Matt Green wide open in the back of the end zone. So could make this 34. 2-7, a bounce back game again. We might run this gauntlet. Read option, finna get loose. Perfect blocking by the receivers. What fucking, like, I mean, I'm just talking about, like, I don't even know the selfless receivers. That's the word for it. 
Selfless receivers. I love it. They commit to the running back. This is Bobby Lynch's best run of the season. Did you see how beautifully he was following those blockers? I really cannot wait for y'all to see him in CFB 25. Here comes Bennett. Little spin move. Unwarranted. Unnecessary. But it worked. That's what we like to see here. Look at that. Getting up in there. Nice little run. He even broke a tackle. What a goddamn saint, baby. For Giuseppe in, leading the game, just gonna milk the clock real quick. Runs it, hands it off to Bennett. He gets another one. I love stat patty. I love it. There's still plenty of time left in the game. It's not fourth quarter. If you have a problem with it, stop it. Bobby Mason Jr., six touchdowns on the day. And I did not know we put up 66 points on Jones County. This offense has really waken up, and that's exactly what we want to see if we want to make a play for state. As you can see, we are still at the bottom of the county. We literally have have to go undefeated to have a chance as Bismarck High is not only 5-0 but 2-0 in the conference and because of the way the state is set up there is no uh, high school playoffs for our division only the top two people in the division each division south and north go to state so we have to be number one in our division to make it to state with this hand off the pin he breaks the tackle he's getting loose he might go all the way they're gonna try to hop him down they actually do he just shut down the bounds after 44 yards didn't introduce Henry Ford here, but they are going to be a reoccurring villain here. But we're going to uh, do a little read option, and Bobby Mason is elite in the red zone with the wickets. He follows his blocks, he knows how to get in there. Turning over the teammates as we go up plus seven on Henry Ford. Bobby Mason looking for a man, throws the corner to Giuseppe, and it's like Giuseppe couldn't throw the corner as an eighth grader, but Bobby is consistently hitting them with Giuseppe as he gets the first one here. Clutch, just making clutch catches after clutch catches. Mason rolling out, almost at his feet, throws a back and gets his <laughs> No commentary needed for that one. That was fucking insane. And then Matt is just wide open in the end zone. I like how he doesn't run out of bounds. What a fucking W. Matt Green really showing out right now. I mean, honestly, with Bobby Mason distributing, everybody gets one. Even Benny. We show love to the running back here. He doesn't get any yards, but he's going to get all these one yard touchdowns because we just can't finish. Pause. Uh, Giuseppe over the middle with a post out. That's another clutch catch for a first down. Just First down, the first down, the first down. Bobby Mason, he's gonna throw that. Oh, quick little seam out to Forges at the 13 yards. It was wide open. He absolutely murdered that guy on the press, and that's gonna do it. 28 21, we take care of Henry Ford. I mean, we were having so much fun, I didn't even remember or recognize that it was a close game just because of how well Bobby Mason and Forge Giuseppe were cooking up. Elite duo. Look at that sack. They actually did get us a couple times, but that is okay. Here we go, playing in the snow against Bismarck High. This is actually a couple weeks later as Bobby Mason draws back. He has the post route wide open, but he throws it over the middle of the. If I remember correctly, we should be 8-1. and one. They should be 9-0. and oh, And we would need to beat them to eclipse them on the leaderboards as we hit Matt Green on the sideline. And if we do that, we have the tiebreaker against them. And Marcus Smith is wide open in the end zone. And I misidentified. That was actually Forrest with another clutch play to put, it, put us down 7. Marcus Smith, 12-yard reception. We are down 7 still. As I just mentioned, Bobby Mason looking for a man. Toth wide open over the middle. We need to clutch this. This game is for the season. Wide open for Giuseppe. Try to juke a man, but he at least he holds on to a curl route. Giuseppe, he's in the end zone. Let's go. We just tied that motherfucker at 21. Third quarter looking for a man. Sanders over the middle. This is our chance to take the lead and steal the division. Bobby looking for a man. Has crossers. He's going to try to lob this one up to Giuseppe, and he doesn't get enough air on it in his inner Accepted. This could be devastating. Back on defense, third and three. Clutch play by Atkins to stop Nike Swoosh. Fuck this team on a third and two. Bobby Mason on the redemption play, and he fumbles the ball, and it gets picked up by Yum. Fuck this team, dog. Anyways, it is now tied at 21, and we just through back-to-back -back turnovers we missed the interception and we get stiff armed by a dude named jumping bean bro this is a catastrophe in the red zone third and seven please hold him to a field goal we're covering for days they try to throw it short it does not work he gets shoved out of bounds but there's a penalty it is okay it wasn't against us third down 
or not third down it was third down third and 13 marcus smith makes the clutchest catch we've seen all fucking year man in his face gets hit as he throws and marcus smith makes another catch with three people around him screenplay follow your blocks baby bennett trying to get loose he gets a first down this is our hall of fame drive right here mason jr looking for a man marcus smith over the middle is fourth and two this is your mvp moment bobby throws it to giuseppe he cannot hit the zach Ertz stiff arm for the touchdown but he does get the first they botched the play it's okay because bobby mason jr is the best red zone quarterback in high school he's the best red zone runner in high school on defense gotta seal it they throw a slant the jumping bean we're up four they need a touchdown and i don't think they can get it and but if nike swoosh keeps throwing dots like that they will looking for a man oh i missed the interception again we're down for a minute 30 the adrenaline is pumping he's looking for a man he throws off his back foot and hits tyler Dude, I'm like, this motherfucker can't be stopped. Read option. I'm with the tackle, and they make it second and inches. This is getting crazy. Man just trucks a man to make it first and goal. I am calling timeouts. I'm panicking, dude. We hit them. It is second and goal at, like, the two-yard line. They are going to run this one, and this is going to be an easy touchdown. As he stiff arms a man, he literally just from Derrick Henry to brother right in front of us. So now we are down three with 41 seconds. We got to work our magic. Mason. Looking for a man. Throws it over the middle. Tough catch by Luke Sanders. Did not tell y'all he was going to be clutch for us. Mason Jr. again. Quick dot. Curl route to Smith. He gets hit stick and doesn't fumble or drop it. My mouth is watering. Pause. Archie on the sideline. Can't catch my breath. Mason Jr. just sippy. Catches the game winning touchdown, baby. Well, potentially. That's going to put us up four. They only have 17 seconds left. Look at this. Cooks the man off the line. They don't even touch him. The safety is standing flat footed. Look at all that space in the middle of the end zone. Great pass lead by Bobby Mason Jr. I'm telling y'all, greatest red zone quarterback in the game. Here we go to seal it. First and 10. Nike Swoos tries to scramble. They don't use their timeout. Well, they do have a timeout left, but they're not hurrying back to the line, and they get hoed. They get hoed by NCAA. Let's freaking go. We just took out the number one team in our division, so now fate is in our hands. All we have to do is either they lose a game, and we end up a game up, or we win straight. And we have the tiebreaker against the number one team. What a fucking game. Great game by Bad Bobby. He came through clutch for us. Shout out to Forrest Giuseppe for just cooking in the slot. Absolutely murdering them. So here we go against Arnold. All we got to do is take care of business. There's Matt Green over the middle. Easy bread. Read the option. Bobby Mason Jr. Puts the god damn. Made him fall. And he hurdles into the end zone. We are feeling ourselves. We're like, state is ours. And you might as well go ahead and bring it the Union County as we go up 14 on R and all 14 14 after some mistakes and we throw a pick Anderson is gonna take this back for a pick six and holy sh this just flipped so quick that might be a momentum changer so now on the flip side of the half we are down 14 after going up 14 play action no time to fucking play let's throw that dot to Marcus Smith Bobby Mason Jr. again looking for a man throws the fade route Toth makes a tough catch in the honey hole Dropping back again, looking for a man. It's going to be straight drop back since Matt Green catches the post on the hash in the red zone. Bobby Mason, where he cooks so hard. Luke Sanders catches the uh, curl route for 15. Easy hand off to freaking Bennett. And that is going to make it 21 to 35 as they score again. I am stressing and we throw a deep one to Matt Green. And I get the swerve catch. Katie y'all run everyone. 54 is too bulky to catch this man. Clutches play of the season for Matt Green. An 87 yard touchdown pass. It is now 35 to 28. And I'm saying fuck all that. We're getting on defense. Four minutes and a half left. I try to intercept the uh, Texas route, but we get a sack on third down, and that makes it fourth and 12. Read option, Bobby Mason, where he's so deadly, he slides, no fumbles. Another read option, gonna hand that off to Bennett. He gets a first down. Wish he would have stiff armed a guy, but it is okay. Bobby Mason chilling in the pocket, not scrambling prematurely, and Marcus Smith makes a tough catch for a first down. Looking for a man again, Archie, wide open. He does it, he fights, but he doesn't get in the end zone. That is okay. Because that QB sneak over motherfucking power. Stage dropping back looking for a man and he's wide open. That's Douglas over the middle. The game is now tied at 25 minute 44 left. He's looking for a man again. The lefty is trying to get loose with it. And he throws a pick. Oh, he dropped it. That would have been the great ending, babe, bro. 
I can't speak English, but Bobby's like, all right, let's take this lead then. Little read option. Bobby looking for a man, has Marcus Smith wide open in the flat for seven, second and three. Taking that nice little out route to Luke Sanders. We're cooking so good right now. 30 seconds left. Matt Green uh, between the numbers and the halves for 16. Bobby trying to just take the top off, just trying to end the game right here. No one open. Play it safe. Slide, brother. He does not slide. Holy shit. And then they try to ice us. And that does not work. We're going to win this 38 to 35. We had a scare in R and all dog. This was like terrifying, dude. I thought the run was over, but that's okay. You should never fret. Don't fret when you got Bobby Mason at quarterback. Forrest Giuseppe didn't play a big part in this game, but that is okay because that just shows that this team is well-rounded and we can get the ball to anyone. If we distribute, distribute, if we distribute and facilitate, we have enough talent on this team to beat anyone whether it's through the tight end through the running back or through the receivers any of the three or four receivers that we have all right page high school just got to take care of business bobby mason jr looking for a man has marcus smith i mean that was a lot closer than it needed to be but that is an 18 yard touchdown what a dot by bobby though he throws so many read option great blocks and this is a foot race and i mean in high school bobby mason is not gonna lose many of these literally out running corners and safeties what the hell though what a sprinter by bobby mason he is gonna go crazy in college i wonder what star prospect he would be because he is absolutely destroying it and he set the record for the longest run in school history 14 to 7 three minutes and a half left hand off to bennett and that is going to make it 21 to 7 and i mean it is low scoring it was a little quick but that is actually going to do it we end up winning the game 21 to 7 and while it wasn't our most explosive game per se it should get us into state as a best case scenario for bismarck it would be a tiebreaker and we have the tiebreaker because we beat them earlier in the season here we go got to make the most of this opportunity don't know if or when you will be back we got a lot of seniors we're taking on rock hill high and record wise this seems like it'll be a breeze as we're 11 to 1 they're 9 and 3 but they have the 11th ranked offense in the state the 7th in yardage they're 14th in points allowed 6th ranked passing defense we actually are number one in yards around in the number one ranked rush defense as you can see we beat bismarck in the tiebreaker as we have the same div record in div division five and uh overall rock hill had the same scenario with catholic high they end up beating them and getting the tiebreaker so here we go first play we're on defense dixon looking for a man he's launching that deep and that is intercepted by cunningham oh we just couldn't get a return on it it looks like he was gonna have great blockers but that is a great way to start state and we're coming out guns blazing play action on second and two throws a back shoulder to giuseppe who is now six foot five mason jr looking for a man over the middle that is a 12 yarder to sanders and Ooh. we're just dying up what a juke by smith for 11 we're just coming out saucing right now throws another dot over the middle i love how bobby is not scared to throw it over the middle on the red zone we're gonna throw that giuseppe wide open in the six five freshman just caught his first touchdown in state as a freshman He's getting way bigger. I'm telling you, we put him on that protein plan, bro, as it is now third and goal after that run. Ja does a little audible. Bobby Mason looking for a man. Throws the quick out route, and he was wide open. What a great feeling to get a touchdown to your senior wide receiver. What a great moment. Look at him turning up. Wide open. One of my best reads, as I normally don't read things that quickly in the red zone. It's really hard. 14 to 7. We're going to throw a seam to Giuseppe. He catches that like a post. He takes a shot and he just eats it. No pause. Bobby Mason rolling out on third down, and that ends the drive as he has to throw it away. They played a little bit of defense, but that's okay. Larson lurking. And yes, a user. Let's go. <laughs> Let's freaking go. Caught a user, and that is their third touchdown. Uh, third touchdown. Third turnover of the day. And we need to take this and just put the dagger in it. Take this lead. Go up plus 14 and ride that wave. So we go five wide on third and win our favorite formation. We're going to lob this up. It's just happening. He mosses a motherfucker. I'm talking about that's how you use your 6-5 frame this is what we want to see he has the potential to be a prodigy at tight end well that means he is a prodigy he has the potential to be the goat look at that box out though oh my goodness 
Motioning Green out to the left. 30 seconds left in the half. We are going to try to get Swifty with it. Mason Jr. looking for a man. He throws an out route to Smith. He has all day. He jukes a man. Oh, he just put the wiggles on him for 23. 23 seconds left. Throws the drag to Archie. He's going to try to put the wiggles on him. He gets eight. Don't fuck it up. Mason Jr. throws another one to Brady. They're just covering the end zone, and I don't blame them because we are cooking. Second and goal, plus 14. Hand off to Porter. He gets hit sticked. We're going to try to hurry this up, but unfortunately, we get the glitch that actually won us a game as we just no sense of urgency. What a blunder. Flip side of the half. Kick return, Bennett gonna try to get wiggly with it, and he just didn't have the speed. Mason Jr. looking for a man wide open over the middle is Jackson. What a new face coming through on uh, whatever down that was. Mason Jr. another curl route to Giuseppe. Giuseppe wide open, having him a day. Mason Jr. pressure in space. He's gonna lob this up on third and 13, but unfortunately that gets deflected. Wish the uh, Toth could do big body things, but that's okay. It's 21 to 14. God, good back juke, baby. Good back juke. Uh, Bobby Mason looking for a man. Throws it to second. Tough catch over the middle. Makes it third and ten. Third and easier, but still third and tough. For Giuseppe, 113 yards today. Damn, Bordeaux makes this shit look easy. It is not easy. Third and ten, making some adjustments. 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Mason looking for a man. Wide open is Matt Green. He lobs that in there, and he holds on to it. Play action. Gonna throw this post in between like four defenders. I mean, he was wide open. Nice fade route to Luke Sanders, and he mosses a man. Bro, put your butt on him. Put the nuts on him. No pause. Four touchdowns on the day for uh, Mason Jr. He is going off in the state championship. What a catch, bro. And honestly, shout out to him for not dropping this. So here we go. Just milking the clock. Hand off to Brady. Good wiggles. Jukes a man. Brady coming back after, I forgot what injury he had, but he missed half the season. That's why you saw Bennett so much. Giuseppe with another tough catch over the middle for 10. We are absolutely cooking. But yeah, we basically got this game in the bag. What a run. Wow, we're going crazy. They called their last time out. That is what it is. That is the nail in the coffin. And if there was a nail already in that coffin, that just burned the motherfucker, all right? It is 35 to 14, and I believe that is the final score as we win state. What a gauntlet. Starting out with a loss to Walton to come back and go undefeated after that. Just go on that stretch. First off, phenomenal catch by Giuseppe. But Giuseppe going through growth spurts and whatnot. Growing pains. Growing pains hurt. But to ride this season out, we end up winning the Mountain West Championship, which is actually our state championship because that's the only way I can set this up. I don't have mods. And that is going to do it for our freshman season. We win 35-21. What a debut by Forge Giuseppe. Absolutely cooking. He showed the potential to be the greatest tight end of all time. All right, it is now year two. Forrest Giuseppe is now a sophomore, 6'5 sophomore, and we are about to get through this season. As you know, we are facing Walton right here, and we get clapped 27-7. to seven. Uh, Bobby Mason Jr. has transferred to Mater Day, so he has left the high school. We now have Z Holmes at quarterback, and it looks like he just got clapped. All right, now we're simming against Rock High, the team we faced in the state championship. They are going to be looking for revenge. They're actually ranked number 11 in the nation and we're going to try to sim this and they absolutely obliterate us 48 to 7 Holmes is not getting it done at quarterback here we go against ACHS and we actually get our first dub in the sim 35 to 21 against JC this should be an easy one wasn't easy per se another 35 pointer and I got to the point where I started looking and I was like yo what the hell is going on so against Walton homeboy only completed 36 percent of his passes bro and we couldn't run the ball for shit uh Forrest Giuseppe led the team with six catches for 44 against rock high not only did zeph holmes get injured but we passed for less than a hundred yards in the game look at this per completion percentage 17 percent bro 14 
Anyways, I was like, okay, did we run the ball? No, not at all. And then obviously we got clapped in a running game. And then in our first win, Zeph Holmes didn't play that well either. Yeah, he had 230 in a touchdown, but 43 completion percentage. He got four of those two for Giuseppe. Against JC, he finally had a good game. 340 yards. Uh, couldn't run the ball worth shit, which is a problem. And then uh, for Giuseppe, had four for 85 and a tubby. Luke Sanders had 137. We get clapped by Henry Ford, 34 to 27 destroyed by Lake Travis 48 to 20 we fucking suck so here we go at the end of the season we are I believe six and four at this point something like that six and two we come in against Arnon we start the game off with a big run with uh Bennett coming out gonna try to play action here second and five we do that just that yep and Holmes looking for a man taking his time launches it deep and gets a great catch by Luke Sanders for 30 yards the difference between Bobby Mason and Luke Sanders Sanders is tremendous not only success flies because uh Bobby Mason obviously only lost one game in one state but Zeph Holmes Bobby Mason was more surgical Zeph Holmes he's like fuck it but he's a gunslinger he sees it he's throwing it no second guesses as we send red in motion good to see him still here he's Zeph Holmes rolls out and finds Forrest Giuseppe in the corner of the end zone not really the corner that was close to the pylon nonetheless no matter where he caught it that is a touchdown and Zeph Holmes starts two for two for 44 in a tub unnecessary rollout gotta stay in that pocket but at least we know he can get shifty because he does not look mobile up seven it's first and ten 20 seconds left in the first gonna try handoff to i presume this is bennett uh we're taking our long fucking time for some odd reason handoff bennett he cuts back he tries to put the wiggles on a man and that is a run for 13 it looked like later on in the drive it's second and seven we go five wide our favorite formation zeph holmes dropping back looking for a man i think he has giuseppe over the middle and he does 21 yard seam route to go up 14 i mean i'm playing with the team and i'm like yo why are y'all getting trashed in the sim bro like we should be cooking like this should have been another playoff level team two minute drill up 14 we're gonna try to put the dagger in for giuseppe what a great juke i was not expecting that he was getting up field getting the end zone no we can never get that last yard 51 yard catch by for giuseppe putting in the work look at the move here just catch little hitch route little catch uh uh get off me little mm -mm. didn't even have the juke for real that was just change of direction and he tries to outrun everyone but the safety comes in and holds him in the end it is what it is so here we go on the goal line you already know we love to give these uh running backs easy one yard touchdowns and probably their rushing numbers are always ass but they be having these touchdowns that's clay white first time on camera 21 to 7 we need to put the dagger in it and just kind of end the season with some momentum so here we go 30 second drill looking for a man took a little while but we got more over the middle shout out to a new face making a tough catch over the middle and it looks like we are gonna go hurry up no we do not first and 10 32 seconds left after a timeout by union county so that's us couple adjustments Holmes looking to go deep here dropping back looking for a man has forced over the middle he oh he actually does juke a man to get an extra couple yards uh second and 19 presumably after a sack 20 seconds left marcus smith hit over the middle makes it third and easy so following third and easy here we go trips to the right curl route luke sanders gets out of bounds stops the clock so we don't have to get cheese first and goal 14 seconds left can we make it 21 plus looking for a man he's gonna throw that and he runs out of the end zone but he gets back <gasps> they don't give him forward progress we run hurry up and we get oh. cheated again there is no way this is like the fourth time this has happened we just got a hold out of going up plus 21 i honestly think he was in the end zone but i don't think we could challenge it nonetheless second and five flip side of the half looking for a man we got marcus on the corner route and i don't know how the fuck he got a foot in but he did what a fucking catch look at this replay here actually i skipped the replay because i fucking suck third and two on the goal line gonna try to run it with Ben A. Let's see how this goes. Hand off. Easy hole. Doesn't get touched. That is unnecessary roughness. Pack his dumb ass up. Why do they keep hitting our players after they run out of bounds, bro? And it is now plus 21 like we deserve. Oh, shit. I didn't know the play was starting. Out route. Smith tried to juke a man and he's reaching for that pylon. He wants it so bad. Gonna try to fade route Giuseppe. It's one on one and he just bullied that man. I mean, he didn't even jump for the ball. I mean, he didn't have a goddamn chance in the first play that is a six foot five 
sophomore tight end, bro. And he's up to like 190, 200 at this point. He's bigger than that linebacker in every way, shape, and form. But that's going to do it. 35 to 17. And that will end year two. A uh, very successful season, as I believe we end the season seven and two or seven and four, which in college would be bowl eligible. But in here, it wasn't good enough to make the playoffs. So it's just a positive record. So yeah, that's going to do it for year two. As you see, we're seven and four going against Page High School to kind of finish it off. And we actually beat them in a close game, 31 to 29. Finally getting something going in the sim after two dubs against Bismarck and Arnold. Bismarck happened off camera because I don't feel like looking for the game. Sorry for breaking character there. I'm sorry, bro. I didn't want to do it. Fast forward, we're looking at the season stats and Zeph Holmes had 26 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, 2,700 yards uh, passing, 53 completion percentage was absolutely but Terrence Jenkins didn't show much promise either as a backup uh, Bennett only had 600 yards in the rushing game but if you add it up between him and the backup that is a thousand rushing yards and well over what is that 15 ish touchdowns for Giuseppe led the team in not only receptions but yards and he tied for the team in touchdowns with nine uh, unfortunately you're gonna he see here in a second that we actually led the team in drops but it's weird to see what NCAA counts as dropped fast forward for Giuseppe is now a 99 overall tight end look at that 92 speed 71 strength which we need to get up 81 agility 95 acceleration 97 awareness have to have high awareness he is now a junior and he is started as a true freshman look at those agility ratings that spinman juke is pretty high 99 catching 85 spec check 96 catching traffic route running is impressive still has good throw power and accuracy from his days at quarterback look at this release rating 94 what a beat East, and he can block what a fucking iron man bro he is a saint bro he's gonna be the best player of the team by far for year three entering his junior year four giuseppe has finally finished his growth spurt he is now maxing out at six foot seven hitting the weight room he is now gonna be 225 pounds he is ready to dominate as a high school junior look at him starting tight end 99 overall 92 speed at 6'7 225 he is about to destroy season three kicking off year three against number three ranked walton county three and oh one and oh in the conference as you can see they have the third ranked defense in the state for giuseppe and Uti county are itching to have the success they had freshman year and also beating walton county as he has not had a win against this team yet in his high school career here we go starting off the game two minutes and 50 seconds left in the first quarter first and ten we're going for verts Holmes drops back looking for a man he's gonna launch that to the sideline and that is intercepted by Richardson a horrible way to start this rivalry game and he's returning that a decent bit I wonder how long that return was I told y'all Zeph Holmes he's gonna launch that my friend he is not throwing it away as he's chilling in the pocket and throws a dot to Giuseppe in between the numbers in the half that's 14 yards all right third in the inches got to make this easy we're gonna hand this off to the fullback let's see if he can get it for us milking the clock a little bit for some odd reason porter cuts it back trucks three people <laughs> stumble recovery and he takes that for 25 yards came a long way from getting hit sticked in season one look at that he runs three people over i miss being able to just truck a nigga without fucking stopping for 10 years bro i missed that animation down seven first and ten on like the 19 ish yard line making a bunch of hot routes zeph holmes wants to sling this one i don't know where though dropping back blips coming in he lobs it wide open in the corner of the end zone is Lewis Moore it is now a 7-7 game Walton plays us so freaking hard and that's what rivalries are baby it will be huge upset to take them out though what a beautiful throw look at that arc too god damn he lobbed that one in there for real all right, here we go. Chance to take the lead. Hits Giuseppe on the slant. He catches it and gets an extra two or three yards. Here we go. First and go. Can we take this lead? Handoff. White. He gets up in there. That is plus seven for Clay White. Four yard rush for the touchdown. Tied at 14. Two minute drill. We have to execute two minute drill. Hits Giuseppe on the out route. He tries to do a back juke and nearly gets his ankles taken off. That's okay. Second and 10 after presumably an incompletion. Got the corner route on the right side of the field. Might have to hit that. It is going to be open. He throws that to Giuseppe again and he stiff arms a man and is able to get out of bounds with a minute and three left in the second half gonna motion Jackson out hopefully this creates space for more on the uh corner route actually we're gonna put him on a curl and throw the curl inside leverage he jukes oh my 
my goodness. Yo, he just finessed like half the team right there. What a fucking drive. 35 yard touchdown to make it plus seven going into half. We leave them 57 seconds, but Walton is not known for their explosive offense as they give us the ball back with 20 seconds. And we're going to try to make something shake. He throws the seam route, gets to the Jackson. He fumbles. But it's okay. Nice recovery by Moore. And now we have 14 seconds left. And we are just past midfield. Going to make a couple adjustments. Holmes dropping back five men wide. He's rolling out. He throws it to the sideline. And Moore catches it. I mean, he just ran a 10-yard out and only caught it for six. But it is what it is. And that is intercepted. Tried to get an easy one to force over the middle of the field to get a field goal. And he is picked off for the second time. Safety just sitting on that, which is odd. I mean, I guess they just ran our tendencies. Here we go. Flip side of the half. Four verticals. Looking for a man. Throws this. He has Giuseppe. He doesn't have enough time to get a juke off, but he does hang on to it with that 96 catch in traffic. Look at him streaking wide open down the field. Later on in the drive, three minutes, 50 seconds left. Holmes dropping back. Rolling out the pocket. Unnecessary. And it is intercepted again. I was like, how in the heck did he get a foot down? I believe I end up actually challenging this, but it's not even worth showing because he clearly gets it in. Throwing that late. Now we're tied at 21 Holmes is having a Jameis Winston game at this point fourth and seven I think we need it and we have the out route and they do give him the forward progress for the first down Holmes dropping back again another out route wide open for 12 Holmes making an adjustment dropping back looking for a man has Giuseppe on the route that got intercepted and he's able to get some yak and get a first down now we are in the red zone barking out orders is Holmes we have Jackson on the curl route I think we're going to throw that to Jackson he catches it on the back shoulder and I do not know how we are not getting that forward progress and look at this this is just easy bread right here to take the lead plus seven I kind of feel like they let us score so they would have a chance on offense with four minutes left in the game this could be the one where we actually beat Walton despite playing horribly but as you can see they score they don't get the extra point though so we win against Walton for the first time 28 to 27 and we are now 2 and 0 to begin the season we might be able to go on a run to make it to state as you can see Lewis Moore player of the game six catches 88 yards two touchdowns and an incredible juke fast forward in the season we are five and three so state is out of the question but we can ruin ruin it here for Catholic high school they are ranked number six in the state coming in at seven and one we end up actually here we yeah we end up getting clapped by freaking catholic high school it wasn't even close 41 to 19 zeph holmes is not getting it done in the sim again number one bhs and we didn't stand a chance 41 to 27 he's putting up points but damn sure not enough points against number eight arno and they get revenge against us beating us 34 to 17 uh zeph holmes is just having a weak season he is not getting it done at quarterback as we take an l to page and we wow yeah, normally we beat them, but as you can see, Zeph Holmes graduates, so our quarterback situation is not looking good at all. So coach makes the decision. We have a senior tight end, 97 overall. Red has been phenomenal for us all year, so he asked for his Giuseppe to please bring us some stability at the quarterback position, and Forrest Giuseppe accepts. So he will lead the team his senior year as a quarterback, despite not playing quarterback since his eighth grade season. He split some time there in practice spent a little bit of time there you know closing out games but right now he has the most potential as a quarterback and there's really no need to evaluate anyone else so after moving here's the training results and look how talented Forrest is after being moved the quarterback he goes up plus six 93 speed crazy acceleration at 96 and all that but that's all his tight end stuff let's look at what this throw power is 89 and then for throw accuracy he gets 89 again impressive so 89 89 on the throw accuracy throw power this should be more than enough for him to lead the team let's see if Forge just said he could come back to quarterback and take this team to the promised land once again but at a different position here we go Forge just said be kicking off the senior year at quarterback up 10 trying to ice the game third Third and eight. Can he convert this and take the air out the stadium? Wearing his iconic number 11, he hits a curl to Wesley. And hopefully that all but does it. Here we go again. Two minutes left in the game. Read option. Forrest gets to keep it. We know he's elusive. He's far more elusive at quarterback than he was at tight end. Gets more space after that. 14 yard rush. First and 10. 211 on the board. Forrest Giuseppe got trips to the left. 
looking at the coverage, dropping back, looking for a man. So it was the post route, and that's the tight end red. Bro, Bernard Red, tight end to tight end to ice the game, presumably. I believe that should do it. That should be enough to give us the cushion to end this game. Going against Rock Hill, going 2-1 and one against them as they... Uh, we beat them in state. They bullied us in the second year. And then here we come and we beat them 38-21 to to kick off our senior year. Forrest Giuseppe having a great game, mostly in the sim. We come in to just close it out, guarantee the victory, hopefully. And let's see if Forrest Giuseppe, Forrest Giuseppe can ride this wave to a state title. Against Walton, the rival, we're up two. We hand it off to White and he gets seven. This is a huge game. Huge implications. Have to beat them. Walton is our biggest test every year as he clay white rushes for 15 yards trying to ice the game it's a lot closer than we wanted it to be but it's always close against walton iconic tight end curl we're gonna throw the tight end curl red makes that catch in traffic because he's built like that we are tight in you i mean our tight end high i guess <laughs> read option on the goal line this should be goddamn guaranteed D in trips and he gets stiff arm not only did he trip himself but he just got stiff arm by a six foot seven 225 pound quarterback Forrest Giuseppe doing a little dance as we just went up plus nine with two minutes 50 left in the game we're gonna do a little sim they make it 30 to 24 so we gotta come back in to try to ice it again another read option give me your ankle son and oh my goodness Forrest Giuseppe stiff arms another man look at him fighting for the motherfucking team bro fighting for the team we're not getting pretty just because we're going to college bro Forrest has so many offers anyways Walton Falls number Number three in the nation again and we take them down 30 to 24 uh we always get in that revenge we do not we hold grudges around here i'm sorry english is not working for me right now skipping ahead we beat henry ford 42 to 21 absolutely destroying them after what they did to us in the previous year or two it just feels good to have a star quarterback as we dominate Lake Travis in the same fashion they did. I beat, I believe they beat us 48 to like 17. We put 44 to 20 on them. Here we go again, just icing it, getting revenge against Catholic High School. They played really tough defense against us. Forrest Giuseppe breaks the tackle. He has a convoy. He's running up the sideline. Will they catch him? No. I'm telling you, he just can't close. Forrest Giuseppe is the quarterback and tight end version of Julio fucking Jones, bro. He gets all the yards in the world, but they just can't can't finish but we should be able to put the dagger in it as it is first and goal we're going to send wise on the tight end or the wide receiver handoff he gets to the edge can he bend the corner he does let's go all right so that's that was the craziest let's go of all time <laughs> we go up plus 11 i believe i don't know check my math bro two minutes 44 left in the game actually i didn't these plays don't really work in ncaa i'm surprised he had the speed to pull it off on all american nonetheless a minute 16 they made it a three-point game Forrest is gonna pull this one he follows his blockers just like Bobby Mason bro just manipulating the blockers to get extra yards still chewing the fuck out this clock we got QB power he catches it Cam Newton right up the middle trucks a motherfucker and he gets another first down and that's gonna do it we beat Catholic high in another revenge game 28 to 25 getting extra XP for being a top 25 school as you can see here if the state started today we would be playing Wayne County as we knocked Walton off the top and look at us same situation we were in in the freshman season oh the more things change the more they stay the same we have to beat Bismarck High to get the tiebreaker in this situation we are in a tie already and this would break the tie and we absolutely destroy Wayne County here as we're not actually facing Bismarck I misread it and we win beating Wayne County which it would have been the state championship had it started today and we win 34-13 here we go again still trailing Bismarck high I do not know if we're playing them right now because I forgot but as you can see they're 6-0 we're 6-0 not in 9-0 overall they're 9-0 overall so we have to beat them as right now we're down 21-12 to to Bismarck high this is the game of the year as we get stuffed on second and nine we have to win this to make state throws the out route to wise what a dot by Forrest Giuseppe we have a quarter in like a quarter <laughs> uh to get back into this game read option and it gets stuffed 
just wanted to show y'all like the computer does stop the read option in this game sometimes especially when you're facing these top tier schools another read option going back to it somebody comes off screen it is okay Forrest makes it third and easy this is the biggest game of his career as a tight end or as quarterback he throws that out route and he under throws it so now it's fourth and three they're freaking high five and on our turf for Giuseppe 13 seconds left in the third quarter dropping back on fourth and three and he hits the crowbar to Jackson can he get out of there he hit the back juke we have a mother fluffing chance nine seconds left in the quarter throws the outright to Jackson he gets out of bounds it, like perfect two minute drill bubble screen don't throw it that's fine we had the curl we're gonna run we throw it again and it's wide open in the end zone what a reroute by joel jackson new face making a goddamn clutch catch to put us back into the game all right let's check out the replay check out for step getting loose making a throw on the run hitting the man right on the hip to make this a i forgot the math on that 19 to 21 little read option has blockers he's gonna get loose there's no way please get out of there no i gotta learn how to run smoother in ncaa why well, don't now because that is over with we might spin it back later but anyways let's get back into character bro for as you said, if he putting on a goddamn show to try to win this game against Bismarck, we're going to go with another reoption. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And he ends up tackling both of us. One of the craziest things I've ever seen in NCAA. They're, it's absurd. He freaking <laughs> tackles the running back and spin kicks Giuseppe, dog. That has to be a penalty. Third and ten. Game pretty much on the line. Throws the out loud. They try to play super defense on that. That linebacker shouldn't have been that goddamn close. And they ice us. They actually end up icing us three or two different times. But that's okay. Turns out we're actually down two. So we're going to kick this three-pointer. And we're going to get out of here with a 22-21 to 21 dub against the number one team in the conference. And that should give us a tiebreaker to make us the number one team in the conference so now we are the team to beat fate is in our hands we can make it to state all we have to do is not fumble as Forrest Giuseppe just stiff arm two freaking people up 21 to 14 against Arnaud who always plays us hard at the end of the season that is the crazy <laughs> that's a wild run by Eric Brady here we go fourth and inches let's go ahead and get the fuck up out of here put it in the hands of your best player Forrest Giuseppe making a couple hot routes here looks like they're sending the goddamn house he's gonna throw a little hitch route wise easy bread and that should do it we're gonna be our now 21 to 14 and we are one or two games away from clinching state speaking of that one or two games this is against page high school Forrest gets injured but that's okay the backup the senior that we benched he ends up winning the game 29 to 22 for us and knees it out so here we go against walton for the state championship what a beautiful way to end the series against a team that started it all a team that's beat us a team that's beat us multiple times gives us a hard time every time we play this is the coin toss first time showing it here at least from what i believe and actually i do not show it starting on defense third and two can we get a stop so we can take this motherfucking lead and jones i miss a tackle and he runs for a good 20 yard they clock him for 19 it was only 20 so here we go again third and eight can we get a stop they throw a pass and he throws a dot to the post i don't know how he throws a post to the post against cover three but that was a 34 yard dot third and 17 and i'm thinking there's no fucking way they get this they hand off a dive and it's a foot race and he does not win as adam or crowder gets stopped after 10 yards it's absurd that he actually got 10 on that so here we go down three on offense hand off the brady he puts a move on him and he gets 11. next play here we go second and 10 looking for a bit forrest just heavy dropping back hits the curl to jackson he's going to try to put the wiggles on him does it work i wonder if they count him out of bounds for that later on in the drive forrest another out route to jackson Jackson. Jackson is our star receiver for real just bailing us out frequently and one hand catch by Tommy Crenshaw first appearance on the channel and he makes a one-handed catch for a first down very clutch of him for Giuseppe he throws the corner and it is swatted by homeboy over there we tried to get a jump catch by red but we might be able to hit him on the post no it's not open we throw the in route to Miller and he's able to reroute and get into the end zone after a 17 yard catch and we are now up 17 to 3 again 
against the Walton Raiders. I think that's what they are all these years, and I don't even know what their team date is. Good job for him doing what all the other receivers couldn't, and that's finishing at the goal line. Third and four, hoping to get a stop. They pass it, which is something I wasn't expecting. And after 10 years, he gets sacked, and that is what we would like to call a coverage sack. So they are going to punt it to us, and we have a chance to take control of this game as we dot that to Wise. He hits a crazy back juke, and he almost got loose. Finally, we don't get double tackled. Look at the blocking on this play for Giuseppe running for his life. He actually breaks through, and he finishes for once. Yes, we finish at quarterback. Pause. No ditty, but we go up plus 11 with a minute left in the second half what a run i mean it's crazy i get a little excited but i can't scream because it's just expected by four giuseppe at this point they try to make it a game they're only down four well guess what happens on third and three that is a 16 yard catch second and five four is giuseppe in the backfield he has doubles he's looking for a man he's gonna throw a post and what a strike between three defenders for 21 yards really trying to steal this lead look at him chilling in the pocket too six seven standing tall even though he's the most athletic person on the field another drop back on first and ten he's looking for a man shrugs a tackle sprinting throws it in the end zone and that is caught but it's not a touchdown that would have been the craziest touchdown i mean i'm sorry i keep saying craziest but we have seen so many wild plays here today as you can see red was running wide open in the end zone but i needed time to set my feet so we could throw this dot and my biggest mistake was leading him out of bounds so here we go quarterback power one of my favorite plays one of the most aesthetically pleasing plays on the goal line and we go up 11 once again so they score three is 21 13 40 seconds left in the third quarter for giuseppe getting comfy in the pocket rolls out a little bit and throws that one off the back foot what a dime what a bomb to joel jackson i mean who else now that we're not taking up all the targets someone gotta eat and it is gonna be joel jackson and for giuseppe just broke the school record for passing yards in a season with that lob what a great way to set a record it wasn't like a little hitch or a screed it was a rollout bomb to your star receiver to break a goddamn record and it's in the state championship so here we go read option easiest touchdown of the year as we literally walk in didn't even touch sprint one yard touchdown by force giuseppe look at the teammates coming to congratulate the man who has been playing since freshman year starting at tight end for three seasons comes in at quarterback and he has has his team with a 15 point lead in the state championship as we make another stuff on third and three wanted to go on defense to let them know we are not scared of you no more you cooked me in year one not this time and i want to put the dagger in so here we go fake quarterback draw gonna try to throw that to red and it gets intercepted haven't seen too many of those by forrest giuseppe but this might get walton back into the game but no it does not as we cut to the victory forrest giuseppe is now a two-time straight champion and he's a state champion champion at two different positions two different roles as a freshman tight end just coming in playing in the slot having the build a team out every once in a while make a tough catch on first down make a catch in the end zone he does that took over in a state championship game with a hundred and something yards and a couple of touchdowns his freshman year two years in the slums zeph holmes was not getting it done at quarterback team never flipped on him decent years and here we go forrest is heavy player of the game senior year comes through Forrest, we know you're a five-star tight end. We know this, but we need someone to play quarterback and actually win us games. We need someone that's not going to have a 50-50 touchdown ratio, or even worse. We need someone that's going to complete more than 17% against the top schools. We need someone that's going to complete more than 53% of their passes on the season. So what happens? A 6'7", 225-pound tight end comes to quarterback and leads his team to state. And it wasn't like some read option wishbone shit he stood in the gun he stood in the pocket he threw the dots he ran the read option he threw the screens throws over the middle throws to the sideline curls slot curls all that through the entire route tree showed arm talent so now he should be getting offers at quarterback and tight end and i wonder what we are going to do with forrest giuseppe in the following game should he start his college career playing at quarterback and trying to continue his dream dream to be the first foreign born quarterback to win a super bowl or should he stick to the position that he loves and had so much fun at and tight end
ladies and gentlemen if you made it this far in the video you have reached the end of the first episode there will be a second part of this covering Forrest Giuseppe's entire college career through Road to Glory with some twists and turns and whatnot it is almost impossible to compete with the larger youtubers especially with me not being younger <laughs> in school or whatever and not you know what I mean like being full-time so like having to work 40 ish hours and then make music and do edit this shit and record it you know it takes a long time and you just it's impossible to keep up with the production of the other youtubers so with all these cfb 25 videos being out being edited and whatnot being so entertaining and so long these are damn near documentaries if you came in here and you watched mine and you're hearing me right now at that hour and whatever mark i greatly appreciate it other videos will be out i basically have switched to like a commentary style and it was really nice to kind of go back to ncaa 14 and potentially madden next year or this year depending on what happens and turn it into commentary so i can sprinkle it in hopefully this does well if not i will at least at the very least release the second video will it kill my momentum yes but hey at the very least if we can go back to our roots for a little bit of nostalgia and whatnot and then i can figure out if this can be something i can sprinkle in or just do in the free time but anyways i'm not gonna hold y'all up any longer because you will probably get another hour 40 minutes to an hour of forrest giuseppe in college so until we meet then or in the comments remember if you know man because we know we up next sponsored by atari and <laughs>